Hello everyone, and welcome to the first day of Saviors of Oldham. Uh, really excited to be playing some of the new set. I've just logged in. Uh, we actually uh, got a couple of cards for logging in. I did do both of the uh, the pre-orders. Is it new? Let's just go to Oldham. Uh, here, here are my login legendaries. We got Raid the Sky Temple as a regular uh, non-pre-order legendary, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, I really want to build this deck with the uh, the Yogg-Saron's Puzzle Box and the Tortolan and stuff. I think that's a, a deck that a lot of people are pretty hype on, uh, but I'm really excited for it as well. Uh, we also got our two pre-order uh, legendaries, uh, which is Making Mummies, the Reborn, the Paladin Quest, which I think is, um, is pretty interesting. Uh, a lot of the Reborn minions are quite good, uh, which is certainly a, a positive thing for a quest that's all about Reborn minions. Uh, and I also got the High Priest Amet, which I, I am excited for. I think uh, if you've been watching for a long time, you'd know that uh, the OTK Divine Spirit Inner Fire Priest is one of my favorite decks. So I think that this could be an interesting part of, uh, uh, of that deck. But you all came here to watch me crack some packs. So let's get started. I think we've got random card back on. I'm going to sit back in my invisible chair. We're gonna enjoy ourselves. First pack. First pack then. Alright. Supreme Archaeology. This is the Warlock quest to draw 20 cards. The reward is Tome of Origination, which is uh, a new hero power. A lot of these, I think all of these quests actually give you a, a new hero power. It's kind of cool. Uh, not a card that you need to play. Uh, and this uh, hero power is a two minor hero power. Draw a card, it costs zero. So it's kind of like having a, uh, a Wilfred Fizzlebang in play. The drawing 20 cards is uh, quite interesting. You can use Plot Twist to, uh, you know, draw a bunch of cards. Uh, also, you can use uh, the Portal the portal Demons, the uh, ones that shuffle the Fell Hounds into your deck, as they shuffle extra cards in that you can, you can draw. Um, adds more cards to the deck, because one thing you don't want to do is play this without any ways to draw cards. Otherwise, you're going to get to the last, you know five cards of your deck or whatever and you you're going to get a hero power that lets you draw cards so uh i think that that is really really fun looking forward to playing some maybe con control warlock or something like that um i think the only disadvantage is you need to have some big boom booms in there presumably to uh get some value off of the uh the quest reward uh what else have we got in here a wrapped golem this is one of the Reborn minions. A 7-7-5 seven seven with Reborn. The end of your turn, summon a 1-1 one one Scarab with Taunt. Interesting. So this is like uh, the Obsidian Destroyer, which was an old warrior card that pooped out 1-1 uh, one one Scarabs with Taunt. Um, and that card was, I think, in, in another time, because I think that was around when, like, Quest... Uh, not Quest Warrior, uh, Pirate Warrior was a really big thing. In another time, Obsidian Destroyer could have been, uh, you know, the modern... The, the old-school version of um, Fountain Elemental. Like, a common that just is... The, the stats are right, like, the, the effect is right. Like, Obsidian Destroyer, I think, could have been there. So, it's good to see them get back to this. And the fact that it has Reborn means that... Uh, it's going to actually be pretty tough to kill. Hopefully, uh, give you some more advantage. Might be more of a, an arena card, though. But we'll see. We'll move on. Yes, Alright. Got a couple of a couple of things here. Epic. Body Wrapper. Battle Cry. Discover a friendly minion that died this game. Shuffle it into your deck. Hmm. This is a curious, curious card. I think this is a lot like whenever you see effects like... Um, like Baleful Banker uh, and things like that, where sometimes it's obvious uh, how good it is. Other times it's not so obvious, and I would say that not a lot of people predicted it to be part of, you know, that Shivala Holy Wrath kind of thing. So uh, I certainly won't try and put any predictions on what Body Wrapper could be good for. Um, the fact that it discovers a minion that died this game, that the minion doesn't have to be in your... Um, in play... Is quite good like maybe it just fits into those uh existing uh kind of archetypes that you'd play um baleful banker in um but full full body as well i think it's quite quite interesting even if you're just like you know you you played in bomb warrior or something to discover more of your bomb lads who knows uh tomb warden as well 
8 mana, 3-6 with Taunt, Battle Cry, Summon a copy of this minion. This is a card that is uh, really important, I think, for uh, that Taunt Warrior archetype. I think this is the card that gives you the most uh, bang for your buck. Obviously, you've got all those new cards that buff all Taunt minions in your hand and things like that. This one, you get an extra copy. It's like the old school Saranite Chain Gang. You play some hand buff cards, get it huge, um, and get him out there. So, excited for that. It's also just a, a nice late game option Man. lots of stats start your turn as a 50 chance to fall asleep that's a uh, percent chance to fall asleep it's not good don't sleep on the job yeah. okay another epic here whirl kick master whenever you play a combo card add a random combo card to your hand it's really interesting cost two as well uh, there could definitely be some shenanigans with uh shadow steps and returning this to your hand and uh, kind of doing what I think a lot of um, the Spirit of the Shark decks would uh, are already trying to do, you know, being very tricksy. Uh, so I imagine this could probably fit straight in there, gives you a bit more um, value, I guess, uh, potential to go off. And we've already seen how good cards like Mana Cyclone and things like that can, can be when you do get to go off with them. Uh, yeah. Very interesting. Um, my only thing is, uh, um, my only question would be, how good are a lot of the combo cards that are in the format right now? Because you really don't want to be getting a handful of head cracks or something like that. Man. Arcane Flak Mage. So, 2 mana, 3, 2. After you play a secret, deal 2 damage to all minions. Really seems like they do want to push Secret Mage as a uh, as viable. You know, this type of effect on this kind of body is, um, is really, really good. They... We usually don't see this type of thing. You know, if you compare this to, like, Flame Waker and stuff like that, usually you get over-costed, understated minions with great effects. But um, this will allow you to keep kind of keep the beat down on your opponent. And I can totally imagine... Um, uh, I can already hear people complaining about um, Secret Mage just because uh, I think if that deck gets ahead of you, gets out in front of you, and, you know, they you start having to play minions into their Flak Mage and they just kill everything every time they play a secret, Kieran Tor, kill it for free, get a body on the board. I can already hear people complaining about that because I think that that's a, a, a common situation that you'll be put into. Uh, let's take a look at this. Bug Collector, Battle Cry, Summon a 1-1 one, one lo Locust with Rush. That's actually very good. Um, this is kind of a, a, a differently statted Hog, Hogsteed Rider, the Merlock one. The, uh, the 2 1 with Rush that poops out a Murloc. Okay, a couple of cards here. Hyena Alpha. Uh, 4 minor 3 3. Lots of people talking about this card as the uh, second coming of Hunter. Um, you know, Hunter's been good more than once. Uh, Battle Cry, if you control a secret, summon 2 2 2 Hyenas. Which is obviously fantastic. It's four mana, seven seven worth of stats. It splits it across multiple bodies, which I think in Hunter is usually good. Uh, when you have Leox and, uh, and that kind of thing, uh, and they're all beasts, which is another uh, another big advantage. Uh, the question is, how hard is it to have a secret on board as Hunter? Right now, it doesn't seem too hard. I mean, we still have, I believe, Subject Nine is still in the format. I could be wrong about that. Um, there's plenty of different ways to activate secrets. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you don't really have one of those... I guess Rat Trap, actually, was kind of one of those secrets, like, uh, uh, Ice Block, where, you know, if you're playing Secret Mage and you play an Ice Block, you know that that Ice Block's gonna stay in play for, presumably, uh, most of the game. So you can always use it to, uh, trigger your... if you control the secret cards. Hunter, not so much. Not so much. Uh, we've also got a Golden Common. Subdue. Center minions attack and health to one. Paladin, two mana. So this is kind of uh, a mix between humility and equality. Cheap mana costs. Kind of like a Hunter's Mark as well. This could actually be be quite good, quite flexible. Especially with um, uh, Wild Pyro as well. Maybe instead of seeing Pyro equality, we're going to see Pyro uh, Subdue. Yeah. Sell hits pride. 3 minor 3 1 death rattle. Draw two one health minions from your deck. One health minions. And there's plenty of good ones. Mm. 
might get left behind. Alright, Corrupt the Waters. The Shaman Quest. Uh, quest to play six Battlecry cards. So this, because uh, it says cards, this means that, uh, I guess technically if we play a, uh, a Battlecry weapon, which I'm not sure if Shaman has any at the moment, but uh, anyway. Play six uh, Battlecry cards in the ward is Heart of Vienar. What is Heart of Vienar? Let's take a look. So this is a... Uh, that's right, it's the Battlecry hero power. So you pay two mana and your Battlecry is double for the rest of the, uh, the turn. Which is, uh, is pretty useful. I mean, a lot of these uh, Battlecry decks... Uh, do have the kind of battle cry, so we're doubling them could be fantastic. Uh, and there might be enough uh, kind of early aggressive battle cry minions that you can kind of, uh, you know, use um, use the hero power in the late game to maybe do some burn damage. I'm trying to think of if there's any, and even if you use this with like Night Blade or something like that, it could still be useful. Uh, obviously, Life Drinker, that those kind of effects. Don't, is Life Drinker still in the format? Don't, maybe. Uh, but yeah, using these kind of effects could actually give you a little bit of extra reach. So. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is a card that a lot of people talked about when I uh, did my giveaway. A lot of uh, a couple of people mentioned Wild Blood Stinger as their uh, favorite card of the set. So, 6 minus 6, 9 beast. Huge stats. Uh, six, 6 plus minions tend to have a little bit extra stats or some extra effects, but this has huge stats and says that uh, your opponent summons a minion from their hand and you get to attack it, which is really, really big. Um, it's going to hopefully disable quite a lot of the combos. I think... Uh, Unfortunately, it's not neutral. It is a, a hunter card, so we are going to have to uh, hope that, I guess, hunter is the one to stabilize the meta. But I really, really like this card. Having that huge butt as well means that this thing is going to be killing most things that come down. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, stuff that it won't kill. Or at least that it, uh, it would die to. Things like uh, Hakar and stuff, like Mechathun. Not a lot, not a lot. Honestly, if you get your opponent's Mechathun down, you're probably pretty happy with that. Jimbo, Tommy Way, long time no see. Lovely to see you as always. How have you been? Jimbo, I've been good. I've been really good. To kind of put a, put this on hold for a bit. Uh, yeah, we, we took a couple of months off. Uh, it was almost two months. We were just with some, uh, some mental health stuff. But we came back a couple weeks ago after a nice relaxation. Um... And we've just been taking it a bit slow the last couple of weeks. I think mostly I didn't want to try to, uh, you know, do too much before Saviors of Oldham came out. I didn't want to, you know, burn myself out. And also I've been enjoying Teamfight Tactics quite a lot. So uh, just taking it easy the last couple of weeks. But now that Saviors of Oldham is hit, we are back. Uh, going to try and be doing, streaming three to, four, three to four days a week. Hopefully doing Hearthstone most of that or all of that. Um, I'm really excited and it's fantastic to see you as well. Okay, Crystal Merchant. Two mana, one, four. If you have any unspent mana at the end of your turn, draw a card. And of course, this uh, kind of synergizes with the Druid Quest, which is uh, uh, kind of in a similar vein to not play, not uh, use all your mana every turn. Um, now, a one, four body is actually really, it's quite good right now, I think. Um, lots of lots of twos and threes in the early game. Um and also a lot of ones with these uh, one toughnesses with all the reborn minions. So I think uh, I think a one four and for two mana could be in the right place where, you know, you if you play it on turn three, you're going to get a draw off it. Maybe your opponent leaves it around, you get a second draw. Uh, I think a crystal merchant could be uh, one of the defining cards of that uh, of that deck for sure, um, and possibly a reason to play that deck uh, in combination with the other. Uh, new 2 mana 2-3 two, that battle cries to draw a card if you control a quest. I think those make for like a really solid core. Weaponized Wasp, 3 mana 3-3 three, three, battle cry if you control a lackey, deal 3 damage. It is in Shaman, which is uh, where we do want to have battle cry minions. Uh, and we have 
sludge, uh, sludge slurper, things like that. Uh, other battle cry minions that create lackeys. So, you know, that you're kind of getting a, a, a good, feels like we're getting a good feel of what the core of that, uh, that kind of archetype could be. Um, and doubling this, uh, this battle cry and doubling all your lackey battle cries for the turn. That's actually pretty sick, you know, for six mana, hero power, lackey, maybe it's the double evolve one, maybe it's even the taunt one, whatever. Uh, double that up. Weaponized wasp, six damage, big combo. Generous Mummy, 3 mana 5 4 with Reborn. Your opponent's cards cost one less. Now this card is is really, really interesting. I think a lot of um there's there's a lot of cards that have uh, a big downside that see no play. There's a lot of cards with downsides that see or have traditionally seen quite a lot of play. Uh it's interesting interesting to think of where Generous Mummy lies. I think one downside to it is that uh, because it has Reborn, it's not going to see, uh, it's not too great in like a Silence Priest kind of deck, which is traditionally a place where a lot of these cards get a home. Uh, and because it has Reborn, you don't really want to silence it because you're losing quite a lot of value out of it. Silencing it when it does get Reborn, that's quite good. Um, but yeah, I, I think there are always cards like this where people will, it's easy to dismiss them because it, like it says on the card that your opponent gets a benefit. Uh, but there have been times where these types of cards are, are fantastic. Like a three mana five, four is huge. If your opponent doesn't have an answer to that, um, they are just going to get, uh, get killed pretty quickly. And especially in the late game, like if you're in top deck mode, this is still fine. You know, your opponent's going to have to play a pretty high quality minion to, uh, get rid of this or, or, or kind of contest this without, uh, a lot of, um, without a lot of. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, without committing too much to it. I went with a group of friends. We rented a villa in Tuscany. And then had some stopovers in Paris and Stockholm. Oh, Gosh. Bougie AF. I can, I can appreciate it. If I ever had an opportunity to uh, rent a villa in Tuscany, I would snap that one off. Dune Sculptor, 3 mana 3 3. After you cast a spell, add a random mage minion to your hand. Um, I mean, the stats don't really impress. Uh, after you cast a mage spell, you get minions. I mean, look, this could very much, this could easily fit into the existing uh, cyclone archetype as another way for you to get a bunch of value. I just don't know how good mage minions are. Because traditionally, mage spells are very, very good. So, TBD, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this one pop up in the first uh, couple of weeks of play. Oh, you must do it. It's fabulous. So, what did you get up to with your friends then? Did you just do a lot of sightseeing? Did you... Was there anything specific that... Uh, you're really excited to go do. Okay. Kartut Defender. 6 mana, 3, 4. With Taunt and Reborn and Death Rattle, restore 3 health to your hero. So, I think this is a, a really, really strong option. Uh, it seems like over the last couple of years, these... Um, uh, these taunt minions are getting better and better. You know, I, I mean, maybe it started with Sludge Belcher, but... Uh, you know, this card is, is pretty sick, especially for a six mana taunt. I think usually, uh, four and five mana is where it at or three mana, if you can get it just because, uh, the earlier you can get something like this to come down, uh, and impede your opponent's progress on killing you, the better it is. Uh, and this is like a super rotten apple bomb, you know, where, uh, hopefully you're going to be trading with some things. It comes back a bit. It's going to restore six health. If your opponent doesn't interfere with it. Um, I think this is really good that my only question is that is six mana too much, uh, for these stats, um, maybe in Taunt Warrior, this will be, uh, especially good, but I'm keen to see this, uh, this card on the battlefield. Man. 
Socket Sapper, 4 mana 4 4, Death Rattle, return a random enemy minion to your opponent's hand. So, kind of like a little bit of a mini Sylvanas here. Your opponent has to play the uh, play the game of how do I trade into this and not get one of my minions returned to my hand. Uh, however, uh, Sylvanas never had to really contest with battle opposing battle cry minions wanting to wanting to come down again. Uh, so, I still think this could be a, an interesting choice. We've seen um, we've seen minions of this kind of stat uh, see play before. You think of uh, Feldorai Strider and things like that. Um, it is a pirate as well, which is uh, a big deal if we're going to be seeing a lot more Hook Tusk. I still think Hook Tusk uh, provides one of the best late game power cards uh, in the in in standard at the moment, and uh, ripping a bunch of sappers and the um, the the five three rush out of your deck, maybe even the the captain plus one plus one. I think it's uh, that's good. I'm into it. Okay, quite a lot in this pack. Got a couple of uh, couple of epics or rares. Couple of rares. Quite a lot in this pack. We've got the uh, Nef Nefeset Ritualist, two mana, two three, battle cry, restore adjacent minions to full health. This card's pretty huge. Um, I think in any decks, if we see a lot of any even zoo decks or something like that, where if you have big toughness minions. Uh, this could be a huge tempo play. Uh, even though restoring health, usually a bad thing, the fact that this comes in a nice 2 mana 2 3 package, I think is really good. Uh, we've got one of the new plague cards. All the plague cards destroy things, which is fantastic. 5 mana, uh, is this warrior? I think this is a warrior card. Uh, destroy all damaged minions, sounds like a warrior card. Does say warrior in big text there. I could read once in a while. Uh, so mass execute. Maybe not the best of the plague cards. We also have diseased vulture, the four mana three five. I like those stats. This is a beast. After your opponent takes damage on your turn, after your hero takes damage on your turn, summon a random three cost minion. A random three cost minion. Hmm. This feels kind of. This feels quite good. I mean, your opponent has to do something about it, or next turn, you can just life. You can life tap. Pay two mana, two health, to draw a card, summon a three-cost minion. That's huge. That's good value. Uh, let alone if you combine it with a lot of the effects from this um, uh, from this set that deal damage to you, or even some of the old ones. You know, it's cards like Spirit Bomb, the which recently got buffed to being just a one mana one mana spell. Uh, a lot of these could be pretty huge. They could allow you to get multiple minions in a turn. Uh, and three cost minions are usually pretty good, and none of them are Doomsayer, which uh, gives this a little bit of an advantage over something like the uh, the Hex Crow or something like that. Good stuff. Did a lot of visiting hill towns and eating and drinking and eating some more. Spent days in Florence and Siena seeing great art and architecture, and then eating and drinking again. What was your favorite uh, favorite food? What was the what was the best thing you ate? If you can't think of the one best thing, give me the two best things. Alright, we are doing really well with these quests. Uh, so this is the Hunter quest, Unseal the Vault. This is one of the, one of the quests that I am most excited for. Uh, so you have to summon 20 minions. Uh, the key thing here is that it's summon. So this includes any effect that is going to uh, drop a bunch of tokens into play. Uh, so things like... Uh, unleash the hounds will uh, get you as many triggers as your opponent has minions uh, so you can get this quest completed uh, pretty quickly and the reward is a two minor hero power that gives all your minions plus to attack uh, doesn't not until the end of turn just straight up plus to attack meaning that with said unleash the hounds um, you definitely lethal your opponent out of nowhere with this kind of um, with this kind of hero power with that kind of power uh, so unseal the vault definitely a, a quest we're looking to complete uh, and looking to play. Really like this. We've even got another Hunter card here. 3143 Battle Cry. Copy a random beast in your hand. Which is a lot of value and it's in that nice, you know, 3 mana 4 3. Good stat block. You know, we could be copying our uh, our giant scorpion, things like that. Um, we could even just be copying some, uh, some, some charge minions, something like that. Getting some value. I like it.
Okay, the got another one of these plague cards here. Three mana is plague of Merlocks. Three mana transform all minions into random Merlocks. So this is kind of a bit of a. Uh, it's kind of like a devolve. I think most of the time a Merlock is going to be significantly worse than a lot of those higher mana minions, though. So devolve with a plus, but it also has the downside that uh, it transforms transforms all your minions as well. So unless you're playing Merlock, you're probably not going to get a lot of advantage out of that. Uh, yeah, I interesting control card. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, one of these pop up in some of these control shaman decks to. Uh, maybe shut down some specific, like, Resurrect Priest or something like that. Excuse me? Oh, he's a sneezy lad. So 130 packs to go? Oh my god. We just start cranking through them. Thank you, Jimbo. Here is another one of the Plague cards. Plague of Madness. One mana. Each player equips a 2-2 two -two knife with Poisonous. This seems uh, not great. Uh, I mean, on the plus side, we can still be doing stuff like, uh, like with Weapons Project, where we play our own weapon removal in our deck. Um, and you know what? Play six mana... Plague of Madness, Harrison Jones, to draw two cards, make a 5-4 body, get a 2-2 two -two knife with Poisonous. Doesn't sound too bad, but you're only going to have one Harrison Jones, and, uh, you know, other than that, you've got to be running other ways to destroy weapons, and uh, I just don't know how good, how good that's going to be. Some cool cards here. We'll start with the uh, epic. History buff. 3 mana, 3 4. Whenever you play a minion, give a random minion in your hand, plus 1, plus 1. Uh, it's actually quite cool, especially with all of the lackeys and things like that. Uh, I'd love to test this out in, um, in Rogue, like Lackey Rogue, where we can um, get a lot of minions, a lot of cheap minions into our hand as we deploy them, kind of buff things up. The, the fact that it's a 3 4 body. Is, uh, is really nice as well. It means we're not going to be... Uh, we don't have to play a terrible card just to get some benefit. We can play a, a reasonable card to get a benefit. We've also got Questing Explorer. I think this is my... Maybe my favorite card of the set. Uh, just in its simplicity. 2 mana, 2, 3. If you control a quest, draw a card. It's really going to tie a lot of these quest decks together. They're all going to have a great turn to play that kind of makes up for the disadvantage of playing the quest, that you're going to be down a card... Uh, and a lot of those decks, I think, do want to play a late game. Uh, they want to play to uh, some kind of big benefit, and a lot of those decks you want to draw into that, draw into your combos and things like that. Uh, it's great with the Battle Cry quest as well. Uh, really, really good, and we've also got Flame Ward here. This is a new Mage Secret, 3 mana, of course. After, your minion attack after a minion attacks your hero, deal 3 damage to all enemy minions. Kind of like an explosive uh, trap on delay. Uh, but we get a bit of extra damage. Really, really good. Have another quest here. It's the Druid quest. Untapped potential. We were talking about this one before. Uh, you have to end four of your turns with any unspent mana. And the reward you get is Osirian Tear, which uh, basically gives you the... Uh, it gives you the... It gives you the Fandral Staghelm ability that you, uh, all of your choose one cards, you get both of the options, which is uh, clearly the kind of card that you want to build your deck around. Uh, there are quite a lot of interesting uh, or very powerful and interesting choose one effects in the meta at the moment. Uh, and even cards like Wrath are always going to be good. Um, Starfall is a personal favorite. I think that if you... Uh, can kind of make a controlling kind of deck uh, work with Druid. I think Starfall with Assyrian Tear could be a huge part of that. Uh, able to take out not only swarms, but also individual targets. 
uh, yeah, honestly, I'm kind of kind of keen to see some kind of big controly druids happen. Oh, what expired match? I haven't even seen this card. Two mana, two one battle cry. Discard your highest cost card. Death row. Add two copies of it to your hand. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. What can we do with Expired Merchant? Even if we're just discarding like a Soul Fire or something like that. That's pretty cool. Leroy. Leroy is an excellent kind of uh, a discard. Get two of them back. Have some extra reach. I, I think that's where we want. We want kind of big cards that give us a bit of reach. Or possibly like uh, combo enablers. I think this could be a, a really cute combo enabler. We've also got a... Uh, Epic here, Micro Mummy. It's a very, very good card. Two mana, one, two with Reborn. At the end of your turn, give another random friendly minion plus one attack. I think uh, we've seen Blizzard over the existence of Hearthstone experiment quite a lot with that. Um, uh, the I can't even remember their names because nobody plays them. I think it's uh, the Weaponsmith, the, the the one four that has the same effect, or the uh, the one mana two one that does that for health. We've seen them kind of experiment with those types of cards uh, for a bit. We saw the Priest, uh, the Cabal Shadow Priest, which was a you know a, a big part of people trying to do aggressive Priest plays. And I like that they're experimenting with it even more here, especially with a Reborn minion, making sure that you're more and more likely to get that advantage. And I can see, uh, you know, a lot of aggressive Paladin decks trying to hit that. Uh, there's a rare 1-mana two, 2-1 two that gets plus one attack every time you play a minion. I can kind of see that, uh, kind of this kind of really aggressive um, balls to the walls paladin deck. So I really like micro Man, Oh, oh, bees. Very good. Golden bees. Hopefully we can pick up another golden bees. I'm very excited to uh, summon some gold bees. Garden Gnome. 4 mana, 2, 3. If you're holding a spell that costs 5 or more, summon 2, 2, 2, Trents. Trent, Trent, Trent. Uh, interesting kind of card. That's a lot of stats. That's uh, 6, 7 worth of stats for 4 mana that you can pretty easily turn on. Uh, we were talking about in that uh, Druid deck, how I really like Starfall. Well, Starfall is a perfect spell that costs five or more that you could be playing with uh, with this kind of card. We've also we also uh, there's also the uh, new uh, like six mana. I think it restore twelve health or create a six six something like that. I think that's another great uh, card to uh, to kind of get a bit of a synergy going on with all of these things. Livewire Lance, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two warrior weapon, after your hero attacks, add a lackey to your hand. Hmm. 3 mana for a 2-2 two, two weapon. Not great as far as the, uh, like, competing on board aspect goes. I think you really want 3 power weapons, uh, to, to be able to clear the board for your, uh, for your later plays or for your mid game plays. I think this is going to be good at contesting a lot of those uh, aggro decks whilst also giving you a bit, a bit more fuel for the next couple of turns. I don't know how good Warrior synergizes with lackeys at the moment. Uh, and also that Warrior does just in general have quite a lot of good weapons. And I don't know if this interferes with that deck at all, with the, uh, with the deck at all. There are some times that you just want to play a fiery war axe, and that's okay. Desert Obelisk. If you can throw, control three of these at the end of your turn, deal five damage to a random enemy. 
I'm sure I'm sure there's plenty of people who have uh, some great ideas on how to get this effect off, and I'll let them think about it. Anytime I see cards like that, I'm like, I'm not gonna figure it out. Let someone else figure it out. Vecina. I think this is another card that I am supremely excited for, mostly because we've been playing a bunch of Overload Shaman lately. Uh, and this card just slots right in there. So it's a 4 mana 2-6. Uh, it says, while you're overloaded, your other minions have plus 2 attack. Now the key thing with this is it's different wording to Lickham. Lickham says, whilst you have uh, overloaded mana crystals, it gets plus 2 attack. So I'm wondering if the, the difference in wording means anything. Like, does this mean your minions don't have plus two attack on your opponent's turn as well? I mean, it, it is other minions, so I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. But this seems uh, fantastic, especially going with a lot of the uh, kind of token, little token maker package with the uh, Voltaic Burst and uh, the big 4 mana 3-6 that... Voltaic bursts every time you overload a card. I mean, you could be trading for some huge, huge minions with uh, very few reasons. We've uh, already seen the Weapon Nice Wars, but we've got a uh, gold common here, the Druid one. Discovery, choose one card for one mana. Which actually is really, really quite good. A lot of these, the choose one cards are really, really flexible, so... I, I wouldn't be surprised if that um, that one mana spell just gives you so many options. No legendary here. Ah, and it is Zephyrus the Great. Uh, so this is part of the Highlander uh, deck package. Highlander is what I, I like to call it. Some people have different names. Uh, you know, these singleton decks, things like that. But I think Zephyrus is possibly one of the most interesting cards that... Uh, Blizzard have designed it in a long, long time. Uh, two mana, three, two. An elemental as well. Great stats. If your deck has no duplicates, wish for the perfect card. So from what I understand, uh, Zephyrus takes into account how much mana you have this turn, next turn, your opponent's minions in play, what you have in play. Uh, it, it factors in a lot of things. And uh, Vox in, in chat was actually mentioning uh, some of the stories been been playing for, uh, I guess... A couple of hours at least uh of the kind of cards that he spits out you know giving multi-shot when your opponent has like the two perfect minions uh giving mind control against the one your opponent having one big minion uh sounds really really good and i'm really excited to play with zephyrus alongside all these other uh, uh exciting highlander legendaries that we're yet to open Mogu Flesh Shaper, 7 mana 3 4 with Rush. Costs 1 less for each minion on the battlefield. So let's think of a kind of interesting, a, a common situation. Maybe your opponent has 2 minions, you have 2 minions. This thing costs 3. 3 mana 3 4 with Rush. That's really good. We also have the potential to play this alongside cards like Voltaic Spark, uh, Voltaic Burst rather, uh, and other token makers. Especially when you have one cost minions in your uh, in your deck, lackeys, things like that, that you can deploy all of those, and this guy, you know, essentially takes that into account. Uh, this could be really, really good. Three four is right on that um, uh, right on the line. I would say if it was a four four, it would be off its head. You know, uh, a four three, maybe 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 worse than a three four. But I would not be surprised to see some Mogu Flesh Shapers around. What do I think of Plague of Murlocs? I think it's really uh, interesting. It's an interesting option for um, Control Shaman. Uh, as a way to like just be like, uh, get rid of these Death Rattles. Just, they're gone. Uh, and now I can Earthquake or whatever. Get rid of all these Murlocs. But in... Um, in uh, I want to see it in Murloc Shaman. Where you, you know, nerf your opponent's board and your board just stays the same. Golden Scarab. I think I have to keep an eye out. I want to read that. Desert Spear. 3 mana 1 3. After your hero attacks, summon a 1 1 Locust with Rush. Uh, I quite like this. 
Obviously, Hunter does have quite a lot of weapons right now competing for these early game spots. We've got uh, Headhunter's Hatchet, always Eaglehorn Bow, uh, and Desert Spear, kind of like a, a bit of a cheaper Piranha Launcher. Except those Locusts having Rush is really, really quite useful. We can take out two Toughness Minions with this. We can take out two One Toughness Minions with this. We can take out a One Toughness Minion and hit our opponent in the face. A lot of flexibility on this Desert Spear. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see it, uh, crop up here and there, but then again with, um, is it Hunter's Pack? The Hunter's Spell that adds a weapon, a beast, and a trap to your hand. Uh, maybe people will forego putting weapons in the deck just to, uh, uh, play the weapons that they get off of, uh, the Hunter's Pack. Swarm of Locusts. This is, uh... A card that initially when I saw the Hunter quest, I was a bit so-so, but I think Swarm of Locusts is really uh, one of the best ways to finish it. We get 7 one, one Locusts with Rush, which is going to give us 7 triggers on our uh, quest. Also, the Locusts having Rush means that if we finish our quest, or we've already finished our quest, we can then pop our hero power, plus 2 attack to all of these lads. That's 21 uh, power in play with Rush as well. We can trade in, maybe leave something left uh, for next turn, which we can then also buff again. So I really, really like Swarm of Locusts. It might be coming in a bit too expensive. I don't know if this quest deck wants to be finishing its quest, uh, you know, really, really early, or if, you know, finishing it on turn six is uh, on the money. Really, really like it. Oh my gosh, there's too much love going on in the Too much love. Oh no. I think this is, uh, this is Bunny Pot's revenge for me bullying. We just opened the Warrior Quest, Hack the System. The quest is to attack five times with your hero. It's pretty easy with, uh, with Warrior. All you gotta do is strap a weapon on and get in. And we get Anrafet's Core. What is Anrafet's Core? Anrafet. Anrafet's Core. So Anrafet's Core is a two mana hero power. Summon a 4 3 golem after your hero attacks refresh this. That's right. I remember this. Uh, checking this out. It looks pretty cool. Uh, especially with something like uh, Soul Thrays. I think Soul Thrays. Uh, goes from being kind of a little bit average to summoning a board full of 4-3s and clearing your opponent's board. It's really fun. Uh, so maybe we could, could be seeing a weapon warrior do some stuff. I, I think those uh, infinite 4-3 golems have to do something. I, I, I'm not... I guess it depends on if the control decks can handle it. If the control decks can handle infinite 4-3s, then uh, it's probably not worth it. But if they can't... Mogu Cultist. Uh, it's a card a lot of people are talking about. A lot of people are really excited to try some Mogu, Col Mogu Cultist shenanigans. Uh, and this is a golden one. Uh, if your board is full of Mogu Cultist, sacrifice them all. Summon High Keeper Ra. High Keeper Ra is a 20-20 that at the end of the turn deals 20 damage to all enemies, including your opponents. So uh, kills them pretty quick or on the spot. Uh, but getting there is, uh, is a real question. I'm uh, excited to see... All of the shenanigans people uh, pull out with the Mogu Cultists. I assume so. Yes. Dark Pharaoh Tekan. 5 mana 4 4. Battle Cry for the rest of the game. Your lackeys are 4 4s. Uh, interestingly, this is in Warlock. So we're going to be playing a lot of like self-sacrifice stuff because we want to play the uh, the two mana, kill a minion, get two lackeys kind of thing. But uh, I really like Takan. I think the good thing is you don't necessarily like that deck. Sounds like something where you wouldn't need to necessarily draw Takan to beat your opponent. You've got plenty of other aggro options. Thank you all for the bless RNGs. 
It has paid off. We did hit another legendary in those last 20 packs, and it is Dino Tamer Bran. 7 mana, 2 4. Don't let the stats fool you, though. Battlecry, if your deck has no duplica duplicates, Highlander deck. Summon King Crush, which is, of course, an 8 8 with charge. Um, this is pretty big. Uh, reminds me a lot of. Uh, of uh, not Alakir, Janulai, uh, where you have to kind of set yourself up and you get a, a massive tempo play on turn 7. Uh, this is the same. Now, is a Highlander Hunter deck going to be very good? I mean, there's some... Uh, there, there have been mid-range Hunter decks that have had a lot of uh, uh, varied threats, so to say. Lots of uh, kind of one-offs here and there in the past. So it could be there. The upside, though, I mean, it's King Crush, so you kind of want it to be an aggressive deck. So is an aggressive or mid-rangey uh, Highlander Hunter going to be good enough? We'll see, but I'm sure Dino Tamer Brand will be uh, the best card in there. All right, lucky last. There we go. Excellent. Let's take a look at uh, what we cracked. How many legendary short are we? Ah, uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Uh, there's four legendaries, four four neutral legendaries, I think. So about ten, about ten legendary short or something like that. Uh, we got most of the quests, which is good. Paladin quest, we didn't get the priest one. Got most of the quests, which I think is good. Uh, having these uh, these build around me uh, cards rather than uh, trying to build around a card that you don't have. Uh, I, I'd rather have that card than not. But yeah, uh, for anyone watching on YouTube, of course, hopefully you enjoyed uh, watching me crack these packs. Of course, uh, a little bit of a reminder... You can use my Hearthstone affiliate link, which you can find in the description, to uh, buy any of any of the stuff on the Blizzard store. If you want to buy some packs, if you want to buy some solo content, any of that stuff, you can use that affiliate link. Uh, and I get a bit of a kickback. It's no additional cost to you, uh, which is the most important thing. So if you're going to be buying packs anyway, use your favorite content creator's code uh, and support them. Anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Stay safe, stay wavy. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> wow. What a great video. For more of my suspect play choices, be sure to check out one of the videos next to my head and make sure that you subscribe to get more Hearthstone content in your subscription feed.